Hey everyone, it's Miriam and welcome back to another video. For this week I decided to put together a time lapse of my painting sinks. I think a few of you asked if I had filmed it, and I have. This concept initially originated as one of my ideas for Inktober, but I never got around to doing it, so I decided to actually do a colour painting of it after it was all over. So here it is. The original has sold for you, but some prints are available in my shop if you are interested, and the link is in the description below. So I wanted to cover a specific topic in this video. I wanted to answer a question that I get a lot. It's probably the question I get asked the most, actually. And that is where I get my inspiration from. It's a very tough question for me to answer because I don't have a very straightforward answer for it. It's just not something that comes to me in a very clear way. There's a lot of factors that lead to me having ideas. And so I'm going to walk you through exactly what techniques I use to get more inspiration and what I think actually has helped me train my brain to come up with ideas on a more regular basis. So I want to quickly define inspiration before we go further. I don't think inspiration is simply coming up with ideas. I think inspiration is also the whole process, that feeling of need, the, 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 the urge to create something basically. One thing that I think is actually quite important, especially in my own process, which is obviously the one I am more comfortable talking about because I can't really talk in place of other people, but in my case, one of the key elements to my inspiration is the fact that it's a mindset. My inspiration isn't something that I can control, I can't necessarily decide I'm going to have an idea and then I suddenly have an idea. It's I have an analogy at the end of the video where inspiration is a little bit like sleep, you, can't, you just can't force it, it goes against the flow of things to try and force inspiration, but you can influence it and you can kind of um, stimulate it, let's say. So you can put in place elements that will help you gain more inspiration, gain more kind of let go of that stiffness that you sometimes feel where you can't find ideas and actually let your stream of consciousness and all your ideas kind of flow more naturally in a way that will inspire you to start creating. In my opinion, inspiration is like anything. It takes time, patience and practice. You can train your mind to start having more ideas and you can put it in a context in which it will be stimulated and will be able to come up with way more concept and more inspiration than you were used to. So here are the things I do to keep my brain stimulated and keep the ideas flowing. And the first thing I do is immerse myself in inspiration material. Now, there's a fine line between doing that and procrastinating, <laughs> between actually doing research and just going through your Instagram feed. But basically what I mean by immersing yourself in inspiration material is actually going out there and seeking out the things that might inspire you. So whether you are at home and you're actually researching on the internet, that means typing random words that you know kind of feel enticing to you in like Pinterest or and, and just browsing the page and clicking on images and seeing what the Pinterest refers you to and things like that. Or it's... Um, reading a book by an artist you really like, or it's going to an exhibition, or it's going on Instagram and actually browsing the profiles of the artists that you love. It's about watching tutorials, it's about watching movies that of in which you have characters or creatures or scenery that you'd like to reproduce. It's about targeted research and in, in immersing yourself in all these elements that you know are creative and have inspired you to be creative in the first place and just letting all that knowledge and all those techniques and all those visuals kind of seep into you and inspire your own creativity. My brain is never better at coming up to ideas than when I've spent a couple hours literally just researching loads of inspiring visual on Pinterest or browsing the pages of the artist I prefer on Instagram, for example. And then I go to bed and I put my head on the pillow and that's when my brain starts firing all this, all these ideas to me. Even though I didn't force myself to try and come up with ideas, just be, by being inspired by the creativity of others, it, I managed to kind of prime my brain to come up with its own ideas. In my opinion, inspiration is an emotional response to something and so my my advice would be to, to expose yourself to all the things that kind of wake all those feelings of excitement and passion and and just kind of fire up a certain blend of emotions in you and push you to want to create something of your own. 
My second tip, which is actually something that really, really helps me, is to write down all your ideas. And when I say all, I mean all. Even if you think that the idea is terrible. <laughs> Even if you look at it again the next day and go, I really need to erase that because the idea is absolutely, it's really crap. It doesn't matter. Your brain came up with something linked to something else that you might have seen or listened to or thought about. And that idea is now a seed. So even if you don't like it, your brain might continue expanding on it and continue finding more ways of interpreting that particular idea and making it more to your liking. And the fact that you're writing it down means that it's freeing your brain from that specific idea and actually opening up the possibilities to come up with more. Because if you stay stagnant on one idea, whether you like it or not, if you li really like an idea, you really want to remember it and you're not writing it down, so you're going to be struggling to try and hang on to the idea as much as possible. And if you don't like the idea, you're just going to focus on the fact that you came up with an idea you didn't like. So either way, this idea is just floating there, polluting your brain and stopping it from flowing freely and coming up with other concepts. Whereas if you write it down, it might actually, it will free your brain to come up with other ideas and plant a seed that you ha now have the choice to either completely forget about or come back to in a little while, in a few days, in a few weeks, in a few months and actually think, Oh, interesting, my brain came up with this, so maybe there's a potential somewhere in there. My third advice is actually linked to the previous one, and that is just to expand on what you've just written down, but not mentally, in writing. You can either decide to continue writing everything that that idea makes you think about, even the stuff that you don't like. If you don't like that idea, then write down why you don't like it and what you'd like to change about it. And the more you'll write it down, the more you'll free up your brain to think of other things and the more you'll come up with ideas that you might prefer. One of the things that you can also do is just pick up a reference or an inspiration piece and maybe a painting or maybe just an image you saw on Pinterest that really kind of sparked something in you and write down everything that piece makes you think about. Write down all the themes that it makes you think of, all the ways it makes you feel, all the colours it makes you see, all the people it inspires you to think about. Just write down, brainstorm with yourself free your brain of all the stuff that is firing through it and it'll come up with more and more and more ideas and maybe at the end you'll be able to look back on it and either you'll have come up with an idea you like by then or you can look back on everything you've written down and actually go oh this bit was interesting i might actually expand this and then start again inspiration is a proactive interactive thing it's not something and I do that a lot, so I'm not bashing anyone else for doing it because this is me. This is one of the problems I have, where I just think, well, I might come up with an idea if I just start thinking and just looking at the blank page and try thinking of what I can draw on it. And as much as I would love to be able to do that, and I fantasise that my brain is good enough at coming up with ideas that I can do that, it's not. It's just not. That's not how her brain works. It just needs stimuli. It needs to have loads of stuff that inspire it. It's it's like learning. Inspiration is a little bit like learning, at least in my case. And so, if you brainstorm, you can also do that by doodling or sketching. It doesn't just have to be writing down things. You can just start doodling and drawing. Most of the time when I just stare at a blank page and try to come up with ideas, obviously that's partly blank page syndrome, but blank page syndrome comes from also the fact that you're not getting any stimuli. Your brain is in stagnation at that point and it's not, it doesn't have anything, any, any soil to let help ideas grow. So you need to just start doing. And similar to the kind of advice I would give for our block, similar to the kind of thing I would do against our block, would be to either do something that you're very comfortable with, something that you ha you can do without thinking, like the, the technique you're most familiar with, just start doing it, stop thinking about what you're doing and just start doing, or if that's something that's actually what you're not able to do at this particular moment in time, then just start experimenting, try a different medium, go outside, draw in a context in which you've never drew drawn before, um, talk to people you've never talked before, just wake your brain up so that it becomes excited to have ideas again. 
My fourth tip would be to create yourself a library of images. It's related to the first tip because obviously if you want to immerse yourself in loads of inspiration images, the best way to do that is to create yourself a library of, of stuff that inspires you and just look at that. But um, so it's something that's really helped me too, is to have loads and loads and loads of really well label labeled and organized folders on my computer of loads of images that just have at some point or another enticed me to start drawing something or woken up a, a seed of an idea somewhere in my brain and I decided to keep that image with me until I wanted to refer back to it and get that feeling again and obviously I'd recommend having loads of folders of reference anyway no matter what you do because that's just a very very useful thing to have and a really good habit to go into but to do that also for images that aren't necessarily reference or technical images that you want to try and learn from, but also images that just make you react in a certain way or another, make you feel something that pushes you to want to create. And then just browse that folder. That's what I do. I have a folder called Inspiration Bases, and all I do is just browse that folder. And I can do that for like an hour, clicking on each page, on each image and thinking, why did I put that in there? Why did it inspire me? This is interesting. I might mix this and this and this. And that just really helps to kind of slightly kind of create this little turmoil in your head that then starts burgeoning into more ideas. But these are the four things that I tend to do to have this constant kind of source of inspiration around me. And I think inspiration comes down to a few things. I think first of all it comes down to having an anchor, your brain cannot just start bouncing off of nothing, so it needs something to start off with, and then it goes towards finding ways to create synergy and momentum. And finally, I think that inspiration is like sleep. The more you try to force it, the more you focus on how tired you want you are and how much you want to sleep, the less likely you are to fall asleep. And you only really manage to fall asleep when you manage to let go of that desire to sleep. And for me, inspiration is like that too. The more I want ideas to come to me, the less they do. And the more I let go and actually trust that my brain might come up with things and might know what it's doing and trust in the flow and stream of consciousness, the more I come up with ideas that I like. And the thing is, is sometimes I find that my mind can be a little bit treacherous because it might tell me, well, you know, my heart actually might tell me, I really want to draw this kind of thing. And then I can't get myself to find any ideas that feel like they work, anything that actually, well, ironically enough, inspire me about this idea, which is odd because you'd think that if I had the desire to draw this, I'd actually really want we find ideas to do it but for some reason that's just not how it works whereas if I let my brain just kind of let itself um, relax and flow and let things happen and just let all the things that I've that seeped into me or the things that my sponge of a brain has absorbed from all the research and the, and the and the doodling and sketching I've done then I slowly start to see the beginnings of an idea that I really like and usually that's how most of the ideas I've ended up painting tend to be they weren't stuff that I was expecting they weren't things that I had planned they were things that came to me when I finally stopped trying to have ideas. So there we are, that's the way I do things. I find a base, I taught my brain to expand on that base and I try to relax and let my mind do its thing. And that's me for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope it was it answered some of the questions that I got. <laughs> I think that's the best answer I can give for where I get my inspiration from, really. I hope this was of some kind of help to some of you. Let me know in the comments if you guys have other ways of finding inspiration. Obviously, we're all different, so everyone has their own technique. And I'd love to hear what you guys like to do for it. Um, I also hope that you like this painting. I, <laughs> I was on Pinterest the other day and I found someone who had um, a photograph of a similar concept without the cat and without the massive ball of yarn but uh, the idea was the red thread and the cat's cradle and the face was covered in, in in thread too and I was really sad initially but also I came up with this idea on my own before I knew about this picture so you know <laughs> I'm still happy with it and originality is not necessarily what I strive to be I just strive to do artwork that I enjoy making so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all very very soon Click 
really really good care of yourself and um see you next week bye everyone